futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Well, good day, everyone. Ira Epstein, and here we are. And this is Tuesday, the 2nd of August, 2011. And the time right now, getting on about 3.10 in the afternoon. Well, thank God they signed the debt deal and the budget. I mean, without that, we wouldn't have had a stock market down 230 points, or would we? I can't imagine a worse scenario. And they resolved their budgetary mess. And yet the market doesn't like what it's seeing, because now that that's behind you, instantly these markets start focusing on other issues. And I think the market's already focusing on the dilemma we're having in moving our economy forward, the jobs data that is going on, fear, real fear, that do we even have a game plan? You know, all we did is, and I'm going to kick with my leg here, we kicked that can far down the road, not too far, because we have a 12-person committee that's going to meet in a, what, 8 to 10 weeks maximum, and figure out that they can't figure out anything. That's what I think is going to happen. The market, I think, today moved on the bonds, a run. These are new highs on this market, which means it's an inversion market. We're looking at new interest rate lows. Call up your broker to see what a 30-year mortgage is. We're doing it here to find out. Some of us heard under 4% today. Whoa, that's a pretty big number. I don't know if that's accurate or inaccurate in your area, but we'll, we'll find out. Gold, all-time high. That's the de facto. It is telling you very clearly that, hey, between the bonds and the gold market, nobody likes what's going on. End of discussion. The, gold, the dollar didn't move today. It's up 14 points. The euro's down pretty hard, 55. But where the euro got annihilated was against the Swiss franc, which has moved out to an all-time high. And the Italian debt market's having a lot of problems. I want you to look at what gold's done here. I was frankly hoping to see the market rally, then pull back into an area here that I thought we'd have an opportunity to uh, at least discuss the options of putting on some option strategies and so on with our clients. And I'm talking what my brokers are here were doing. I must tell you, this market exploded today out of the gate. I had one of our viewers write us today, and I do appreciate it, trying to point out that I was wrong in a statement that I made, that uh, gold in 2008 was a down year. I was dead right on what I said. I've talked from the end of July through the end of December. And in 2008, I went back and checked that maybe I'm doing something wrong. The market was down in that year. And, of course, that's the stock market crash time frame. That doesn't mean gold wasn't up for the year. It wasn't up in my contention from the end of that month through the end of December. I contend, and my statement is, that I think gold will be higher by year end than it is as of the close of business which was two, two days ago, right up here in the 1625 level. And we'll see what December has to hold. Am I still bullish? Yes. And let's blow up the chart, take a look at this runaway in the gold market, and start looking at the chart pattern. The pattern is one of higher highs and higher lows. The difficulty with the pattern is the chop made a higher high, then a lower low, and you had to have the guts to step into the market and buy the new higher high and get through yesterday, which did not get under that 1605 level, which was the swing line. If you did that, you caught a good chunk, if not all, of today's move. Why do I say that? Well, you're over the 18-day average of closes. That number is 1,600. By tomorrow, it might be over the 1608 level, yesterday's low. That's a good sign. It means pullbacks in the 1600 level have now, in my opinion, replaced the possibility of the 1575 zone. I'm assuming that will be the holding spot now on big breaks, $50 break. I'm also looking at the market moving up over key moving averages, but more importantly, the market's hit the Bollinger top. Now, it hasn't done that in a while. Can it move a lot higher and keep pushing that out? It certainly can. However, this chart pattern's already fairly wide, unlike how it was back here in this bottleneck. So while it can move out, the odds of staying over this Bollinger band are not strong. That number is 1655. That doesn't mean you get out of your whole position. Doesn't mean that if you were a, one of my students, one of my customers, that I wouldn't be telling you if you are long gold, and you should be, and 
through our advisory service, we've been talking about that with clients, to not take out and take off some of your position up here. I think you keep your toehold in the market because you don't know where it's going, but don't join the parade that it's off, it's running, it's going to be $2,000 instantly. If it does, say la vie, you got your toehold. If not, you play, forget that it's gold, play chart patterns. That's my point. This to me has been the key. The slow stochastic study. It has stayed embedded even when the market made the lower low. And I can show you this right here. It didn't lose its embedded part, yet the market at this point had a high that was higher than a previous high and broke down. That's the hardest part of this pattern type uh, recognition on, on what we call a swing line. The market then moved up, made the higher high. That was the gutsy buy. And yesterday, they shook you as the market dropped down into the uh, 1608.20 zone. And the key was, would the stochastic held on? If it did, I was looking for resistance here in the 1646 level. That was the Bollinger Band as of yesterday. Got it? That was your top coming into the trading. Today, as the day went on, the market not only broke through there, it started pushing the Bollinger Band higher. So this market's still very bullish and still looking good to me. The silver market does not fall into the gold pattern. The silver market, while it was up beautifully, $1.45, is still a pattern where the market has a higher high, a break low that got close to but didn't quite hit the 18-day average of closes, and it remains overbought. The copper market's still in the bear camp. The market has got a higher high in the most recent break low. It actually happened yesterday and followed through today. Is lower than that low. I'm going to look for resistance around the 442 level. And at 435, I think you should see against the Bollinger Band potential support. Do I, do I, would I recommend a trade here? Let me do this in plain grammar for you. No. Even if you sold the 18-day average, your risk is over the last rally high. And forget this is copper. That's a Big dollar amount, a lot of points. So the answer would be no, before I get too far. I want to remind you about our futures trading kit and what it offers. I want you to look at these webinars. They're really important. It's where I review 39 charts. I also put out oral and written updates as part of all this group. It comes to you, and I make it look like a CD, but it's really a download. You click on the download, everything comes in, including this charting software, and access to what we're doing. You cannot try it more than once in a year. After that, you're either a subscriber, you become a customer, you get our services, and so on. But I wanted you to see this, and I think it's super important. All right, let's keep going on here. Here's the crude oil. There's nothing bullish about this. The market came down here. You got your lower lows. You got a lower high. You're against the Bollinger Band, and you're oversold. You've got a stochastic that's already 16.9. You don't want to, in my opinion, be pushing anything bullish. It's one thing to come out of maybe some short positions and have ammunition to sell rallies, but this market is looking very bearish still. Yesterday I mentioned to you that the gold-silver ratio is waffling, and that's what it's doing. It's going sideways. The lower this number goes, the more silver is gaining on gold. That's the way to look at it. Now, today that ratio is looking like it's going to finish at 40.95. Yesterday it was 41.19. So yesterday you had to have 41.19 ounces of silver to buy an ounce of gold, and today you need 40.95 ounces, so the silver gained a little bit on the gold. That's the way you look at that when you're looking at a chart like this. Here's the rebob gasoline, and this you start marking on your calendar. Hey, things I should watch. See how narrow the Bollinger Band's getting? That means something is going to brew. The longer it goes sideways, the more powerful a move will come. And part of trading is looking for things in advance that you might see. And this is the, the rebob gasoline. That's one of the things I'm looking at. Here's the Brent. It, too, is trying to develop this sideways action. When's the last time you saw stochastics that narrow? You don't. It's unusual. So something is brewing here. And right now, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to the bear market uh, people because the last thing was the lower and low. And we haven't made a higher high, so I'm getting concerned as to what that market may offer or not offer in some manner. Keep your eye on bonds. You haven't seen this, period. I don't know what to tell you. I haven't seen interest rates like this, period. Interesting concept there. CRB index took off again today. Don't know that it really turned the trend back up, but you're getting a good bounce because of the grain markets and because of the metal markets. With that, I'm Ira Epstein. You have yourself a good day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow at about the same time.